Welcome to the Redacted Culture Cast. This is the 71st episode, and if you want a snap of good news, you're listening to one of the top 5% podcasts in the world, thanks to listeners like you. If you want to go ahead and support the show, we have the opportunity. Uh, you can always go to redactedculture.locals.com, where you're going to get a little bit of the uh, previews of things to come, and I'm, I'm asking questions and trying to engage in discussion there, as well as what this is supposed to be going live april 5th 2023 that will be in the nearing the end of the pre-order for uh season one operation two into beasts in conjunction with ethan also known as gypsy walters so if you want to head over to redacted llc.com that's where you'll find our merch and then again if you want to su support the show subscribe which will keep us alive despite the size you really don't you really don't make money at podcasting that early, and we've been at this for a little while now. But if you want to support the show, you can go over to redactedculture.locals.com, uh, and we'll engage in discussion there on and off the show. As we build more infrastructure, I think we're going to keep. I'm going to fo keep focusing in that line. Now, today's episode is a solo. It's a solo going live on a Wednesday. That's because we're recording a little bit out of order. Last Friday, we got to publish episode 69, and in proper gun culture comedy fashion, if the day, if it is episode 69, and it's supposed to go live before the most important holiday of gun culture, which is April Fool's Day, we were going to have admin results on the show and he was able to make it so if you would like to go ahead and listen to that one he uh we actually get a little bit into his doxing element at the end so we'll uh thank you for those who have listened and now on to the show i'm going to start today's episode starts in the church and this is there's a couple of reasons why this might be timely but it's not actually starting about nashville we're starting with Mr. Rigney, Mr. Or Dr. Rigney is out at, as I'm reading an article, I'm reading the headline of an article by Baptist News Global, whatever. Rigney out as Bethlehem Seminary due to Christian nationalism and infant baptism. This is an example, and the reason why we're presenting this is not only because of the relevance of events, uh, events like this going on, where just, you know, at the same time we're having people attacking churches and schools were having churches have to deal with leadership which is always going to happen you you always have to look at you, this will always have to go on uh rigney is separating from bethlehem seminary over um, statements supporting christian nationalism and christian nationalism is a name which refer, refers to a belief or series of premises that are held to be true and and the, i and i'm more than willing to assert I'm willing to under, uh, assess that most of the conversation that involves what we refer to as Christian nationalism doesn't work very well because of the difficulty in terms used. It seems like it, from reading cursory notes on it, and this and I, and from what I've under, come to understand at, that is that from what I understand that people who sort of support this idea of Christian nationalism describe it as, is that there isn't a healthy way to have a distinction, or even what, more importantly, it's impossible to distinguish between church and state in a certain way. Or, and if I'm going to be maybe more middle of the roadie, it would be that the, that people who are Christians should be encouraged to participate in the form of government that we exist in which is a republic but i'm i'm going to let other people talk about christian nationalism who might be better off suited to that in the future but one thing that we can understand about a term like christian nationalism is that it means different things to different people some people refer to christian nationalism as some sort of christian version of nazism which is quite hilarious uh, and those people, this con conversation that we typically see, um, that kind of conversation, sorry, not those people, that kind of conversation about that, 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 let's just say discrediting of Christian nationalism by means of an insult as a ad hominem tend to sort of color the way that the way that, that it, the conversation around ideas and topics like Christian nationalism, um, go. In other words, you have a group of people who are Christians 
who are considering the relationship between church and state in reference to the church, and people who do not know anything about the state or the church itself decide to have an opinion on the subject? Kind of strange. We see this often in gun culture. Uh, we see this often in, in the extent of American culture, where people who have basic, not even a basic or cursory understanding about, say, firearms and their use, are very, very willing to be very local and vow, vow, are very vocal, sorry, not local, very vocal and aggressive about their opinions when it comes to guns. And I am willing to advocate something for if you are older than the age of 25 and you still believe in gun control, whether it's because of ignorance or malice is no longer relevant, you should not be welcomed in your environment because you have chosen to believe something either against what is good or because you don't want to know what is true. But hey, I digress. <clears throat> And maybe, and this is just an example of what that might look like. But it's, I mean, we see the same story over and over again. Who are the at champions and advocates of gun control? Well, well, it's not even gun control at this point in time. It's just open, uh, open level to disarmament. Is the most malicious amongst us tend to be supporting it. And they mask their malice with a, t a nice, healthy dose of ignorance. This extends from your angry aunt to the president of the country right now. And why, this re why is this relevant to the idea of Christian nationalism and why we would even be talking about it is because if we are going to engage in a conversation, if we were to look, or I'm sorry, if we were to look at what's going on at Bethlehem Seminary, the president or the, the person in charge, whatever the chairman, whatever you want to call it, this Mr. Rigney, is being ousted from Bethlehem Seminary because of Christian nationalism, which in the, probably in the ring of important beliefs that are orthodox, uh, is certainly one that doesn't just validate dismissal because it, it might be engaging in the question of what is the relationship between the church and the state as opposed to simply stating that the church or the state should supersede one another or you know, going on and so forth. The other issue that he that they're that they've cited is infant baptism, and that tends to be an inside baseball game. <clears throat> but moving on, perhaps there might be some influence to the way that Christian nationalism is portrayed in the world over the decision to have him step down or be removed. Now, what what day is it? We're still talking about April 5th, 2023, and by now, much of the Nashville shooting has been eclipsed in the news cycle by the supposed arrest or arraignment of Donald Trump. And the, 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 the Nashville shooting actually gave way to two different tragedies. First, we had, well, maybe we had a tragedy, and then we had something else that followed it. The tragedy itself is actually what happened. We had a person make the conscious decision to go into a place and kill children. We There is a person who chose to kill children. That person was identified as being transgender, which is an interesting definition in itself, is an, an interesting identifier itself, because transgenderism uh, is an interesting belief system because it is the fusion of um, pseudo scientific elements with pseudo or with very pseudo religious elements. It's a combination of metaphysical truth statements about what it is that constitutes a human being, and it makes claims about an individual's so called authority over their identity. But another important detail came out of the, the shooting in Nashville, and that was in the form of the response. And the response to the shooting was not simply that it happened, but that we need to look out for and be wary for violence against trans people, which is an interesting category again. And there is sometimes implied some element of you know, Christian violent backlash, which I mean is, is kind of strange. If you've met Christians, we don't tend to be the uh, the go doing of the violence type, uh, even in even in reference to things like the Crusades. There's an interesting element to be argued there, 
but what the, we do know and what we have uh, we have what are what are the, what are some you know fundamental beliefs that can be posited or can be um, extracted from the response well the white house especially this uh jean pierre lady person uh seemed to make it more make it clear that even after christians were killed it's important to pay attention to the trans people and inside the gun culture we asked ourselves again who is and isn't allowed in gun culture which again is a strange question because we continuously come back to the decision that being a part of let's just say be welcomed into the halls of gun culture is not the same as having the right to bear arms but the, there is this conflict or this presented conflict, which I think is more important. Let's change the screen here for those watching on YouTube. Thank you very much, by the way. There is this presented issue um, that we have two categories of people. We might even call them descriptive categories. You've got on one side the category of people described as the trans people. And then on the other side, you have the category described as the Christians, which would be interesting because I thought transgenderism isn't a religion, but you're making a religious distinction between two groups. Caught you there. Second one is that these two groups are described as being in conflict with one another. Now, they're described as being in conflict with one another and the uh, as if and the implication uh, the implication is that because a trans person and, 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 and because an, ind an individual who identified as a trans person decided to made the deliberate choice to go commit a heinous, horrible decision or not horrible decision. Sorry, a heinous evil action that they decided to go kill children that Christians would turn around and take it out on trans people. It is the trans people that are suggesting that the Christians will take vengeance on a category of people when it's the Christian people who understand that individuals are created in the image of God and that individuals make decisions. That it isn't that the person didn't go or it's a, that 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 the actions of an individual are not indica indicating of the actions of the whole they might show you know masqueraded intent but it's in other words that the the guilt of the individual does not translate to the guilt of the collective the individual who committed the murder and this is another this is a personal gripe um if you're listening to people talk about events like this and they say it's unthinkable. I guarantee you the person who committed the violence thought about it. So yes, it was very thinkable. It was in, what was another word, inconceivable. They conceived about it before they acted on it. Let's be accurate with our descriptions when we talk about wicked people who do wicked things. A person meditated on killing people and knew that they were targeting a school and, were, and knew that there was the likelihood that they would engage with children. If they did, they, they, the person was capable of comprehending the summary of their wickedness. But in defense of whatever the trans community is, the, the, the way the world responded, the way a certain collection of people in this country responded to was not to consider that maybe religious persecution might occur um, even on a cultural level, but that they would at least support the people who they identified as being similar to the perpetrators. And that's a serious concern. So when we go back to talking about Christian nationalism, there are a group of people who are condemning Christian, Christian nationalism who are not a part, maybe not qualified to define what it means. And at the same time, we have a group of people who probably a different group of people, but hey, there might be a Venn diagram out there somewhere, who are also identifying, taking in the event that happened, a woman who identified as a man shot up a school killing children, and they chose to come to defense of people who similarly identified. Now, this makes sense. You have to give them some grace. And one part of that grace is that if a Christian, an individual Christian, were going to do something evil, we would say that that is not indicative of all Christians. 
because I mean, Christianity is a broad subject, right? I mean, transgenderism is a broad subject, right? There are millions of different pronouns. We wouldn't make this indicative of whatever the trans religion is, unless, of course, they say, but yes, it is indicative, and then we have to have serious questions about it. And this, this flows into what we're talking about when we're talking about paradigms. <clears throat> So the shooting itself, which is already being eclipsed by the arraignment of Donald Trump, was responded by a White House, which chose strangely, maybe not strangely, not or they chose to defend the shooter or their identified category of people. And what is this relevance to? What is this relevance to? You have in our world communities, people, this is going to be a strange philosophical argument because, or this is not a philosophical argument. This is just an observation. We exist in a world where a pastor and a doctor will be removed, a doctorate, like not 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 medical doctor, um, whatever, um, will be re, will be <laughs> removed from a position of authority for supporting something. I mean, yes, that uh, is germane to that subject. Whereas they will also not remove people who are antithetical to the belief system. Uh, this you see this oftentimes in Christian schools. They will they will fire a professor or a cadre or a staff member who is um, believes in some sort of orthodoxy, even though or some sort of traditionalism, and does not like what they're seeing as far as the encroachment in their world. Uh, yet they'll hire a teacher who doesn't even believe in the Bible. Kind of strange how that be. If you are running a school, I'm sorry, if you are running a yeah, a school, an, a position, of, a point of education in the United States. If you're running a if you're running a Christian college, let me make a financial suggestion for you. I know very few people are listening to this, but hopefully I can make a puddle in the water here. If you want to make that school successful, make it a Christian school. Stop making it a diet Christian light school that is sort of open and 1990s here to just pander to anyone who listens. Because there's enough, there's enough schools trying to compete for that pool of people. Um, maybe make a college education that's worth something that's focused on actual Christianity, not woke politics. Because you can call it Christian, but it ain't. <clears throat> so, the paradigm and what we're seeing, we've been talking about paradigms quite a bit lately. And the term paradigm was made popular by Thomas Kuhn in the book, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions, or at least that's what I believe. I think I can understand it. And there's a, I'm going to read a line here it, describing something, what he's referred to as, what he's referring to as these paradigm shifts. Or what I believe he's going to. It's early up, early in the chapter. I started reading this finally. It's been sitting on my shelf for too long. Um, what? Okay. And when it does, when that is, this is again I'm quoting. And when it does, when that is, the profession can no longer evade anomalies that subvert the existing the existing tradition of scientific practice. Then begin the extraordinary investigations that lead to the profession. The, the profession at last to a new set of commitments, a new basis for the practice of science. I'll read that again. And when it does, when that is, the profession can no longer evade anomalies that subvert the existing tradition of scientific practice, then begin the extraordinary investigations that lead the profession to last, the, the profession at last to a new set of commitments, a new basis for the practice of science. When a paradigm, when a, a paradigm for the history of science or when a paradigm for a scientific, uh, what the, the scientific profession, a paradigm being sort of the base set of beliefs, maybe oftentimes taken on assumption, but the found, but the base set of beliefs, the model per se, uh, accumulate a, a large enough body of anomalies, which are unexpected discoveries that are in contradiction to the original theory. These anomalies pile up and eventually overturn the ship that is that current paradigm, and there enters a time where you have um, 
there no new paradigm has come yet to set its place. That is this exciting time of trying to, to, fi to figure out what the new milieu will be. What is the new de rigueur? What is the new status quo? What is the new defining element of this era? And I believe that gun culture is in that era right now. We've talked a little bit about, um, we've, we've referenced things like uh, the new gun culture, or gun culture 3.0, or whatever we want to talk about it. But we are watching, we are living currently in through a paradigm shift between the old ways and the new ways. And the old way, the last version of gun, of not gun culture, but the last version of what we're talking about. And this is if you're referencing to the Art More podcast where they refer to it as gun culture 1.0, which was the, the, the NRA orange hat hunting style gun culture, which it's not 1.0, it's, but we're not going to argue with terms. I'm going to refer to that as the law abiding citizen paradigm. That was the paradigm of cultural norms at the time, which argued that the best way to depict a gun owner was a law-abiding citizen. Now we have a problem here, is because that the, the law-abiding citizen is placing a very high value on doing what the law says. And the law is oftentimes being written by either people who do not know what they're talking about, or worse, know what they're talking about, but are putting in uh, elements which overtly and directly contradict the values that are placed, i.e. the NFA. Or they're empowering people like the ATF to work against you. It's not that the ATF as a concept is corrupt. It's just that it's being used and it's doing the wrong thing. Instead of spending its time trying to fight crime, it's trying to produce it for some reason. Huh, funny that. So... <clears throat> The old, the old paradigm, which has now collected enough anomalies, like, let's see, a law-abiding citizen. Well, if I follow the rules, it'll work out in the end. No, it's not. If I trust in the courts, it'll work out. No, it's not. If I, uh, the, the ideal citizen is somebody who goes about everything through the legal way, and in doing so, they'll have everything, they'll have access to everything that they have rights to. No, it isn't. In fact, we are going to say if citizens abide by the law, maybe the theory is that if citizens will abide by the law, then they will no longer be punished. They will not be punished for their obedience. We were wrong. So I think it's fair enough to say that enough anomalies have piled up on the on the bed or piled up in the in the presence of the old paradigm, the law abiding citizen. And it is time for us to declare and produce a new one. This new paradigm is, if maybe we can say with a certain amount of hu uh, humility that this new paradigm ha doesn't yet have a name, but, but this new paradigm, um, this new paradigm recognizes that we are first and foremost exhibiting our rights because they are our rights that our rights are God-given, that they are not presented by government. That means no matter how much you vote to take away the guns of people, you are still wrong and they are still justified for owning those guns. Let me be perfectly clear. A person who chooses to own a gun, who has not voided a right to bear arms through the, in, the assault of another person, a person who has not already given up their right to self uh, self what is it called? Self-determination to some extent by all by attempting to and using we're just going to be quick here. Word uh, actions like murder. A person who has not done one of these, who still retains their rights, does not need the permission of the government to exert that right. Now, whether it's strategic or not for you to break the law is an entirely different question. And for the purposes of. Breaking the law is not something that we should do casually, if at all. <clears throat> and so the old paradigm, the idea of the law-abiding citizen, placed the, that citizen in a position where it was their responsibility, not only there was it was their responsibility to ask for permission. The new paradigm that we live in now says it is your responsibility to take care of your environment. It is not the responsibility of the government to take care of your church or your school. And whether and even if they choose to take on that responsibility, they're not going to do it. 
And if they're going to do it, they're probably going to do it by the worst way possible. So this is the new paradigm. The new paradigm of gun culture, we might call it a will to action. We might call it the declaration or, or, or re, the, we might call it the for and by the people paradigm. We may call it <clears throat> private citizens as a new paradigm. But the old paradigm, where the old paradigm would require that we ask the government for permission, the new paradigm is rejecting that. We see evidence of this in constitutional carry states or permitless carry states. And it's interesting that we're seeing a doubling down of states who are in opposition to your right to bear arms like Minnesota and New York and California and Illinois. And, and there's others, but we'll just use those ones as an example. They are taking away, they're actively attacking, infringing, or it's not even taking away. They're infringing on the rights of individuals. And that right is something that you have because you're a person. The new paradigm of gun culture understands this. And why I wanted to use the term will to action is because we, for whatever reason, in our gun culture have internalized to take on the language of the left, we have consumed this idea that we can't do something until we get permission for it. And that is strange. That is strange. If you know what is right, do what is right. If you know what is the right thing to do, do what is the right thing to do. Why are we asking for permission to do that which is expected of us? Or maybe better said, why are we asking for permission or waiting for permission to be men, to do what we should do, to do what we believe to be right? Which is the foundation or which is the fundamental difference between the old and the new paradigm. Now we can figure out a different title if we want to call it something new. Maybe we want to figure out a name that fits, you know, fits better as far as marketing or whatever you want to call it. But the new paradigm of gun culture does not stand on the basis of permission granting. It stands on the basis of what is right. So when you exist in a church, and I'm going to make it, I, I'll, I, I'm sorry, if you exist within a church, I, I, actually more importantly, uh, let me make this clear. And I think it's going to... It might ruffle a little bit of feathers. But if you, are, if you are a leader at a church and you have not considered your security posture at this time, that is a moral failing. It doesn't mean that you need to have one. It doesn't mean that a church needs to have a security team with the radios or the guns or whatever. It doesn't mean that you need to hire one. It does mean that we as citizens, especially citizens in our churches now, because apparently, according to the current government, being a Christian is antithetical or is in opposition with being a trans rights person, which is being supported by the government. Kind of weird how that is. Our religion is going to oppress your religion. Mm, I have some issues with that. But because we have entered in a state like this, we cannot not only expect the state to do it, but it is, it is not right to place that responsibility on the state. You as a Christian, you as an individual citizen are responsible for the security of the institutions that you participate in. Sure, we may not be able to win over the schools, but they're government lost buildings anyway. So, oops. But why is it that we are waiting for permission? Why are we asking for permission? We don't, why are we asking for permission from people who despise our values? This goes back to the whole Christian nationalism thing. When people, when we are talking about what we refer, when we're talking about ideas like Christian nationalism, and there is a dispute or an argument or a problem, we kind of run into a little bit of a, a, a it can be an either or issue. It might be the case that what we're arguing about is not actually what the thing is about. In other words, that uh, Rigney is being accused of supporting Christian nationalism, but the thing that he's accused of being supporting is not actually, uh, or, or the, the form of Christian nationalism that he's being accused of supporting is not that which he supports. He might be arguing that something like there is a difference between the separate, the, or the separation of church and state is not a philosoph philosophically tenable concept or constant, and somebody else will be trying to say that he's trying to recreate some version of like the bad German characters from World War II combined with Christianity, which doesn't work, but fine. Uh, the other issue is that what, what you call good, someone else calls evil. 
And I think that's what's going on here with the church scenario is that what you call good, you having an, a firearm, being able to own it is not actually, we're not actually trying to solve the same problem here. People want to take your guns away. They don't care about your well-being. In fact, what you call good, self-sufficiency and individual agency, they call evil. So that being said, welcome to the new paradigm of gun culture. If this is going to be the most important takeaway of the night, I want it to stick with that. Just as Thomas Kuhn identified that there were there were uh, these revolutions within uh, the scientific community, you could call it science culture or whatever you want to call it. Uh, uh, we are experiencing one in the world right now as far as gun culture. And it is abandoning one of the old paradigm. As the old paradigm is collapsing, the law-abiding citizen paradigm is collapsing, it is going to be replaced by a new one. And now is the time for thinkers to engage with what that means. Which is why we're running this show called the Redacted Culture Cast, because that which becomes the foundation for the new gun culture will set the tone for the future. If we can have a conversation about this, if we can engage in these ideas consciously, willingly even perchance, we will be able to better shape the future before us. And that is not necessarily a reference to Season 1, Operation 2, Into Beasts, but there's your subtle plug. So... In conclusion, the new at the the core of the new paradigm of gun culture is certainly more focused on doing what is right versus asking for permission. And I think that is exactly the point that we should consider when it comes to the decisions that we make going forward. It is a subtle but important shift away from asking for advice or no no sorry away from asking for permission when permission isn't the right thing we should be asking for maybe advice but it also identifies where we're at the other thing that's changed is that we need the the new paradigm needs to be a paradigm focused on courage and as we go forward in our gun culture courage needs to be rewarded People speaking out, people need people speaking out, people finding ways into their local government, people participating on a local level. Well, we talk about things like Uvalde and the Nashville uh, response to an active shooter. I think it's a really good thing that the people over in Nashville received a healthy batch of support. Uh, perhaps we can find some way to give them a hand. But I think they should be rewarded, uh, and the people in Uvalde who cowered should not be. That's just the way of the world. Sure, your job is hard, but we are not talking about that. We are talking about the new paradigm of gun culture, which is where we look at and think about what we think is right and true and good and pursue it and pursue it without having to ask for permission. That being the case, this has been the Redacted Culture Cast for Wednesday, April 5th, 2023. If you want to sh support the show, if you want to be a part of this paradigm shift, if you want to participate in conversations around subjects like this, how are we being an active part in the, the generational shift of gun culture, then you can head over to Redacted redactedculture.locals.com and if you want to become a member, sign up and support the show, we greatly appreciate it. That again is redactedculture.locals.com, where we will be hosting more conversations on these subjects. That being the case, I'm going to sign off because we're a little out of order. This is a solo going live on a Wednesday, but if you didn't, if you weren't here to hear it, uh, last Friday, which is usually when the solo, solos are delivered, was the Friday before April Fools. And as a gift, or maybe as a little treat, we got to have admin results himself on the show for episode 69 i wonder who's going to be the guest for 420 it's way too far out but we'll find out take care and we'll talk to you soon